Hey guys, welcome back to Butler Studio Virtual. In this video, I'm going to explain and demonstrate the second phase of the painting process, typically referred to as working within the shapes. Enjoy. One of the first things you're going to see me do here is use a retouch varnish. And what this allows me to do is see the values and the colors a little bit more accurately. And this was typically used in sessions of oil painting in between sessions such as a block in and working within the shapes as we're getting ready to work here. And what's happened is the oil and the oil paint has evaporated. And so what the spray is doing is it allows me to temporarily bring back those contrasts of value and color. And it's really nice to have this spray because if the painting was even remotely wet, it allows me to spray it on top, even though it might have a little bit of wetness to it and I can work right into it. And I should note, I should be wearing a mask here, but I do have the windows cracked and the fans are going behind me. I'm going to start with the element of color here to begin with on my palette. If you remember last session on my palette, I mixed five different values that lined up with the grays underneath my glass on the left side of my palette here. And you'll see some of those same values in the greens, but I've changed my palette to include color theory. And the color theory that I figured out from the block in was green, blue green, uh, the opposite of blue green, which is a yellow ochre. And then I can take any of those yellow ochres into a deeper brown red, which would be the opposite of green. So I'm really starting out here with pairs of opposites or complements. And then on the right side of my palette here, you'll notice I have what's typically referred to as a spectrum palette. These are colors that go from warm to cool and also light to dark, left to right. And so what I have set up here is a color theory on my left side of my palette and on my right side of the palette, I have colors that can mix into that color theory. And this is a good way to think about color as you move into the next stage of the painting process of working within the shapes, or in this case, we're working within the color. Let's take a moment to go to the chalkboard here. If you remember in our blocking stage, we talked about the seven elements of art, and then we talked about the four elements that really go into the blocking stage. And then there were three elements that really don't go into the block-in stage, and those were texture, space, and form. But the four that really went into the block-in stage were color, value, line, and shape. We're going to continue to work with these four elements well into the next stage of painting, but I'm going to slow down and just focus on two of the elements in the next stage, which are color and value. And with this outline, I think you're gonna logically see what art vocabulary is happening within these two words and well into the next stage of painting. So with color, I have on my palette on the left, uh, color theory, and that really is for me in this painting, a series of blue, greens, and greens. And the blue greens have an opposite, which is a yellow ochre, which I have mixed on my palette. And I also have uh, plenty of greens and I'm going to use a red and deeper reds and use that as a complement as well. And then with value in the block in stage, I had five different values mixed up for the block in stage. And my goal in the next stage is to get to eight different values to have more variety within my values. And the good news about all this work and this outline and all this effort we're going to is if you know these things and you're working on these on your palette, in terms of color and value, you've really knocked out two of the elements that you need to do in the next stage of your painting without actually even touching your painting yet. And now it's all about where do I put it? So as we jump back into the canvas here, I'm gonna hold up the line work that we did with the gridding and the block in. And remember where the main focal point is and where some of the secondary focal points are and start to do what I like to call restate and refine. I'm basically gonna refine the values in my focal area, along with my colors in my focal area, uh, along with the new palette I have mixed up here. So with my reference pinned up here in my focal area, I'm gonna start to work on some of my lightest lights, establishing my darkest darks, and along with some of my easiest colors that I can see 
and some of the ones I've already pre-mixed here on my canvas as well. And this really gives me a range to be able to start in on values and colors. Some of these values and colors within the focal area really help me establish the other values and colors that are away from the focal area. And that's one of the reasons why we start in on the focal point first is kind of a guide to help us find that range and to help us move away from that focal area as we move into the painting. I'm gonna cut back to a shot of my palette here just to show you one more time my colors, uh, my theory with a red filter over top. So you can see what values are really happening here uh, that I'm putting onto the focal area and into some of the relationships around the focal area. So you can see here with a red filter, uh, I've got five different values and I'm gonna work on adding more values within that same area. This is my palette off to the right of the Spectrum palette, and I promise to tell you what these colors are. So this is Cadmium Lemon, Cadmium Yellow Pale, Cadmium Yellow Deep, Yellow oak Ochre is the fourth one, Cadmium Scarlet, uh, some people like to use Cadmium Red, I use Cadmium Scarlet, Terra Rosa, Alizarin, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, and I don't always have this on my palette, but I thought it'd be nice to have it as a deeper brown. Viridian, Emerald, which I don't always have on my palette, but I have a lot of greens to work with, so I'm gonna put it here. Uh, Radiant Green, which I don't have always, and a Cobalt Blue, and an Ultramarine Blue. So that's my Spectrum palette as uh, on the right side of my palette. This is something I like to do into the next stage of painting, which is to pin my vo art vocabulary words up in front of me the same way I might have my reference in front of my face. And that really allows me to see what's happening as I work within the shapes, work within the colors, and work within the values. And as I work within the shapes, I start to notice I want to keep making the shape smaller in my focal area and bigger as I get away from my focal area. And that allows me to lead your eye and, and trap your eye basically in that focal area. And the bigger shapes are gonna allow your eye to move faster away from that focal area. Now that I have my focal point somewhat established with my second stage of painting in terms of colors and values and shapes, I'm gonna go over here to the right side of my canvas and establish, according to what I figured out with line earlier in the block in, a secondary focal point over here at the tops of the reeds where they meet this background. And that's gonna swing your eye from the left side of the canvas in terms of a focal area there into a smaller secondary focal of, over here on the right side. And notice I'm using the same things I did here in the focal area. I'm just not doing as much of it because it's a secondary focal point, but establishing values in there, darks in there, colors in there. And then I'm actually gonna start to swing your eye back to the focal point again with almost a third focal area right there in the middle. Now I'm going to continue to work with line here in terms of knowing where to put things and where not to put things. And again, I figured that out in my composition as to where secondary focal points are and good stopping areas for your eye. And I'm basically working in between these two different focal areas. I have a main focal area, I have a secondary focal area. And every time I step back, I'm adding another relationship, whether it's color, shape, value, color temperature sometimes. And I'm trying to make sure that the main focal area remains the main actor. And the second uh, dairy actor is over here to the right. You notice it, but you're not gonna stay there quite as long. And then as I work away from these two big areas in general, I'm trying to find bigger shapes in the sky there that just kind of tie the two together and allow your eye to move left to right. So this is really the completion of the second stage of painting, which is typically referred to as working within the shapes, but I like to refer to it as working within the relationships. I think that makes a lot of sense. We worked within color, we worked within value, we worked within line, and we worked within shape. All four of those really to get broken down to the next component to make up the second stage of painting. And again, I hope this was helpful. If you could like, comment, or share this video, and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. We will see you in the next video. Thanks.